All right, so we're one o'clock my local time. I think we're seven o'clock or so time. So I figured I'm just gonna get started. Thank you guys so much for sticking around or joining my session, logging in today. We just wanna thank our sponsors for today so much. Right, we're going to actually have, uh, as you guys probably already know, we're going to have prizes. So make sure that you actually stick around and to visit the virtual bar so that you can see if you actually won or not. So let me just talk a little bit about myself. So my name is uh, Dion Taylor. I was actually born and raised in the Netherlands and I moved to the United States uh, about 16 years ago. So currently I work at RSM as a pre-sales uh, director. So feel free to follow me on Twitter or check out my blog. I actually have new content every week. Uh, I also do YouTube videos also every week and also feel free to, uh, to connect with me on LinkedIn as well. So what we're going to talk about today is obviously I'm going to show you how to actually set up that configuration right between LinkedIn Sales Navigator and Dynamics 365. And then I'm going to talk about some of the functionality and, and the underlying functionality as well, such as like data validation. I'm going to talk about data synchronization from Dynamics to LinkedIn and the other way around. I'm going to talk a little bit about smart links, what they are, how we can use them how we can now create contacts from LinkedIn and push those to Dynamics 365. And then I'll show you how we can also embed that Sales Navigator widget inside of Dynamics 365. And there's gonna be a whole bunch of demos, obviously, because I really believe in seeing and showing things, right? And then I'll talk a little bit about pricing just to get you a little bit of an idea of what that looks like. So. Most of you probably heard of the integration between Dynamics 365 and LinkedIn Sales Navigator, but you might not exactly know the details, right, on how everything works. So keep in mind that I'm not going to cover all of the features in Sales Navigator. I'm just going to cover what is relevant through this integration between Dynamics 365 and LinkedIn Sales Navigator. So with this integration, we're going to be able to move data between these both of these applications, which means that we'll have to enable and configure this in both LinkedIn Sales Navigator and in Dynamics 365 because it's bi-directional. Now, I'll talk about what data can be synchronized a little bit later in this presentation, but with data flowing into Dynamics 365, this obviously gives us more options to perform actions on the data as well. So for example, you can use Power Automate to automate processes such as setting up alerts, for example, when a LinkedIn activity is created in Dynamics 365. And then from there, we can now run reports, right? To actually report on those LinkedIn activities. And obviously uh, there's a lot more that you can do there as well. But before you can do this, obviously there's gonna be some prerequisites that you need to consider. So for example, um, Microsoft Dynamics 2016 or any version of the Dynamics 365 on-premise is not supported. So keep that in mind. So you're going to need to have a Microsoft Relationship Sales subscription for Dynamics 365, which is basically a combined license for Dynamics 365 sales and LinkedIn Sales Navigator. And when I talk about pricing, we'll talk a little bit about that as well. Or you're going to have to you, you're going to need to sign your team up for LinkedIn Sales Navigator team or LinkedIn Sales Navigator Enterprise. So that's when you're basically you don't have Microsoft relationship sales, relationship sales, but you're going to purchase right Dynamics 365 sales and LinkedIn Sales Navigator separately. So for you to configure Sales Navigator, you're going to have to have a Sales Navigator administrator and a team member seat. Your browser needs to have JavaScript enabled, and obviously, right, you need to disable your pop-up blocker for the Dynamics 365 domain as well, of course. 
Now, by default, LinkedIn solutions are not automatically installed. So you're going to have an administrator that needs to install that solution package before you can actually work with it, right? You can start that installation by navigating to business management, as you can see on the slide here, um, that area in Dynamics 365. And then the only thing you need to do is click here on this LinkedIn sales navigator button that you see on the screen. And that's going to initiate or start that installation. And this is that installation window that you'll see. And once that installation is done, you can then go back to the previous screen. Then you're going to click on LinkedIn Sales Navigator again. And this will take you to this screen where now you can enable the integration. You can turn on photo refresh. And again, we'll talk about photo refresh a little bit later as well. And then the lastly, you can turn on the LinkedIn Sales Navigator controls on the forms. There's actually a couple of tabs uh, on the forms for uh, leads, contact, account, and opportunity, which you can just, you know, you can just go in here in there and just make those visible once you've gone through the setup. And then, of course, we also can put a widget on a form as well if you want to put it in a different place. So I'll show you how to do that as well. So once you've done that, then you actually need to set up the connection from Sales Navigator to Dynamics 365. So in this setup, you can actually enable that write back from Sales Navigator to Dynamics 365. So that allows users to save information created in Sales Navigator back to Dynamics 365. And, and what that really is and what we can actually write back. I'll talk about that a little bit later in this presentation as well. <clears throat> it does take about 24 hours um, for certain syncs, I should say sync settings to, to um, synchronize the information back, but some of this stuff is also going to be very immediate. So again, I'll talk about that a little bit as well. So once you actually, and you'll see that in a second here as well, if I click on connect to CRM, you're going to get this little pop-up window because obviously it integrates with Salesforce as well. So the only thing you have to do is just pick, you know, which CRM system you want to connect to, and then that will walk you through the process. And I'm going to show you that in a second as well. Now, after you configure that sync, you can also configure data validation. And when that is actually turned on in Dynamics 365, a new option set field that's called MSDYN org change status, that's a system name. And it's actually the, the, the display name out of the box is not at company flag. That field is being added to the contact entity in Dynamics 365. And those va values in that option set are no feedback, not at company, and ignore. And the way that it works is that when the company of a LinkedIn record does not match the account that the contact is related to in Dynamics 365, the field will automatically be set to not at company. So, right, I mean, think about a lot of organizations are always complaining about their data in their CRM systems not being up to date. Well, what's a better way to get your data up to date than connecting it to LinkedIn because who is going to update those profiles with the most relevant information, right? When somebody actually leaves one company and then goes to a different company, of course, the people themselves, right? And this really allows us to, when they change the company that they are related to, we're going to be able to see that in Dynamics 365 through that not at company field. Now, obviously, there's also as you can see on the slide here, two different views for opportunities and for contexts as well. So those are called for the opportunities, all opportunities at risk contact, contact left and my opportunities at risk contact left. And the contact views are all it's not a company and then my contacts not in, at company. So those are automatically obviously filtering out those contacts that have that company feed, not at company field set to, right? Not at that particular company. Now, keep in mind that this validation only happens for contacts that are related to accounts and contacts related to opportunities that are owned by a sales navigator user that has CRM sync enabled. And obviously those profiles need to be matched as well. 
And this validation, this is what I was talking about earlier. This is a type of validation that occurs every 24 hours. So it's not a real time update, but it is being synchronized over every 24 hours. And then we have photo refresh. You kind of see that already, right? It says here, get the most recent profile picture from LinkedIn with daily updates. Same thing, that's also a 24 hour uh, occurrence of that refresh. And again, right, it's just going to update that profile picture from LinkedIn, which is kind of nice in the contact record. Now, data validation also helps with the matching of Dynamics 365 records, uh, right, with the LinkedIn profiles. And the Dynamics 365 fields that are used to match lead and contacts are obviously, right, first name and last name, and then title, company, and then country, phone number, and email as well. So think about this. The way that this works is that you have, once you have these two applications integrated with one another, um, again, it's going to run every 24 hours again, right? It's going to run this, this check on contact information in Dynamics 365 and is going to compare that with the profiles that are in LinkedIn Sales Navigator, right? Or in LinkedIn, I should say. Then what it does, it looks at these fields to see if there's a match. Now, it will automatically match some of those records, right? If that actually is the same or similar, it doesn't have to have every single field in there, obviously. But if that's not a correct match, you can even go in there and then manually unmatch them and match them with somebody else, obviously, as well. So that was for the contact records. But for the account records, uh, the following Dynamics 365 fields are being used. Obviously, company name, right? Addresses, websites, phone number, industry, number of employees. So the more data that you're going to have populated in those fields, the more accurate, obviously, those matches will be, right, in LinkedIn. And then, like we said earlier, this is the same thing. Whenever we do matching, whether it is, you know, an account record or a contact record, we're going to be able to manually change that if that match was not accurate. So think about that as well. And then there are some other configuration options as well. So you can decide whether or not, obviously, people have the ability to create a contact record from Sales Navigator to Dynamics 365. There's some additional configuration there as well. So I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, then we can allow people to send in-mail messages through LinkedIn and then save that to Dynamics 365. We have the ability to use Team Link, and a lot of people are usually thinking, what is Team Link? Well, that's actually allowing users to basically not only get use my connections, but also use the connections that anybody in my team has. So for example, um, if I have Sarah Smith uh, as a connection and uh, Arthur and I are on the same team and he has John Smith, I'm also going to be able to access his connections, right? Because we have Team Link enab enabled and we're on the same team. And then we have Smart Links. And I'll, I'll actually going to talk about that a little bit later as well. We used to have something that was called Point Drive and they were actually, they replaced this, I believe this was back in March with smart links. And I'll talk about the details on what exactly that is as well. But I actually have a little video here because obviously I don't want to do this live because that kind of screws up, uh, you know, by uh, the way that I have it set, set up right now. So I figured, let me just go ahead and use this recording on how you connect Sing LinkedIn Sales Navigator to Dynamics 365. So let me run this real quick, right? This is inside of LinkedIn Sales Navigator. You're gonna click connect on CRM. This is really how easy that is, right? This is a pop-up. We're gonna say, I'm going to connect to Dynamics 365. The only thing you have to fill out here is just that company, subdomain, right? So you don't have to type in the entire HTTPS dot CRM dot blah, blah, blah. You'll see that in a second. I just put in whatever my uh, online domain is. You can see that right over there. I'm going to click continue. That brings up, right? Here you go, my login page. And you can just sign in there or use a service account, whatever you'd like to do here. And then you're going to just go ahead and close that tab, obviously. That is it. And this is where you're going to be able to see when was the last time that that synchroniz synchronization actually ran. So that's how easy that is. But now let's take a look where 
what that looks like, right? Some of those integration options in Dynamics 365 and in Sales Navigator. We already saw it on the slides, but I like to show it anyways. Let me actually enlarge it a little bit. Hopefully you guys can see this a little bit better. So you can see here, right, my LinkedIn Sales Navigator. And if I click on that, this kind of took a little bit the last time. Yeah, so here are some of these things, the options that we have, right? You saw earlier that I said that first, obviously you're going to click that, which is going to start that process of those LinkedIn solutions being installed. After you do that, you click on here again, and then you're going to have the ability, as you can see, to enable or disable that integration. You can turn on photo refresh and you can see here, this is that enable LinkedIn updates. What I talked about earlier, if a contact leaves an organization, right? Um, we want to know about that and we want to see that in Dynamics 365. And again, because, right, I just told you guys that there is going to be that new field on the contact record. We can even have notifications now fly out as well, right? Hey, so-and-so, your contact, blah, blah, blah you know, so-and-so's name, they changed organization. Maybe you want to go in there and update your contact record, right? Or you can put it in an advanced find, or you can do a weekly, uh, you know, you can use Flow to create a weekly um, email maybe with all the folks that actually changed organizations for your salespeople to go in there and update that, right? So again, there's multiple ways uh, on how we can do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and cancel out of this. Now let's take a look in Dynamics 365, or not in Dynamics 365, but in Sales Navigator, right? So here I am in Sales Navigator. As you can see, I have my admin center over here. And if I scroll all the way down, this is where, first of all, you connect, right, to your Dynamics 365 instance or CRM instance. You can see here my last sync. Then a lot of this functionality, what you will need to enable CRM sync for all seat holders within CRM. You just have to set this to yes. This is a little bit confusing um, because there are still some additional steps that you need to do, um, but you need to have this set you know, to yes. So let me actually go ahead and here go to the account center so I can tell you what exactly I'm talking about. This is where you're going to basically give your sales navigator licenses to people in your organization. So you saw earlier on this page, yes, I have enabled CRM sync for all seat holders, but it doesn't mean that they are all synchronizing back. As you can see here, right? This one for me is actually on. You can see here, Chris's is off. And I have certain people here where they're not matched in Dynamics 365. So we still need to run that process. So the way that I can do that is I can just go ahead. You can see here, I can click on turn CRM sync on. And you can see now Chris's is turned on again. Right? So that's kind of how that works. You need to make sure that you, in your, in the actual um, LinkedIn, excuse me, in the uh, links in the person that has their LinkedIn uh, in here, right? So for example, if I go to LinkedIn, let me just go to my LinkedIn real quick, linkedin.com, right? So my LinkedIn account needs to have the same email address associated with this account that I have in Dynamics 365. And it's really not a big deal because you can have multiple email addresses associated you know, to your LinkedIn account. So um, if you want to set this up to kind of like see what it is and kind of test it out and you're doing this with like, a, you know, a, a, a fake, uh, you know, or, or, or a test account in Dynamics 365, you can just that way, you know, add that email address obviously to your LinkedIn directly from within here. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about the data that's going to be synchronized, right, from one application to the other. So we just saw that the synchronization needs to be set up bidirectional. So let's talk about what's actually being pushed over, right? So I'm going to start with what's going to be synced from Dynamics 365 to LinkedIn Sales Navigator. Now, I've actually received several questions about this because I think a lot of people think that as soon as you turn on that connection, uh, the, the synchronization between Dynamics 365 and LinkedIn Sales Navigator, some people told me like, okay, well, does this mean that all of the connections that I have in LinkedIn are going to be pushed over to Dynamics 365? 
Uh, no, it does not. Does it mean that anytime I make a new connection with somebody that that's going to be pushed over to Dynamics 365? No, it does not. We don't want that probably, right? Because um, it, it might just be people that you're not going to do business with, but you still want to be connected to them through LinkedIn. So let's take a look at the synchronization from both perspectives. And like I said, we're going to go and start here from Dynamics 365, what that looks like. So Accounts and leads are saved for all open opportunities where the sales stage is greater than the stage that's chosen in the CRM sync preferences. And this stage is actually set by the administrator for all users. And this enables Sales Navigator to automatically deliver updates to users on the most important people and obviously companies as well. Users will see a CRM button within Sales Navigator for those records that are imported in CRM and anything that is matched between uh, Dynamics 365 and Sales Navigator as well. Now, if they click on the, the button, then they're going to be able to open up that record. So that button that I just talked to you about, which I will show you in a, in a second as well, is actually going to show up for accounts and leads that are saved from CRM, right, through this integration that you see here, as well as accounts and leads that are found and matched in Dynamics 365 and context, obviously, as well. And it's, I think this is pretty self-explanatory that that synchronization obviously, obviously runs as that whatever you're using as that integration user account, right, for the connected CRM. So let me show you real quick because, right, I said it depends on the opportunity stage, right, when we're importing these accounts and these leads. So let me show you that real quick. If I go back here in my admin settings, this is what that is, right? So these are those sales stages that's basically through the integration, it is linked to uh, the LinkedIn that I can pull it up here. So this is just that particular field that we have in Dynamics 365 that I can choose from. So anything above propose will be then obviously pushed right, or, or linked, I should say, to Sales Navigator, because we're not really pushing data, right, just those linked profiles, I'm going to be able to have them in a list group together. So that's kind of how that works. And this is when we're being able to write data from LinkedIn Sales Navigator to Dynamics 365. Now, as a user, you're going to be able to have uh, you, you're going to be able to send in mails and or messages from Sales Navigator to LinkedIn contacts, right? Just like you can do today if you're using LinkedIn Sales Navigator. But through the integration, you can actually perform those actions like sending that message directly from within Dynamics 365. Obviously, if you prefer using Sales Navigator, sure, you can do that as well. But the main thing is that there's going to be a, a button that's called Copy to CRM that's a checkbox. And if you actually click that before you send that message, then that message is at created, as you can see here, as a activity in Dynamics 365. So this is, again, what I was talking about earlier as well, right? Now we can run reports. Now we can have flow. Uh, we can create flows to put some logic in there uh, as well, et cetera. So this is, this is very nice functionality. Now, currently when a LinkedIn contact responds to a message, you're not going to have any of this functionality. There's no activity going to be created in Dynamics 365, but this is on the roadmap is what the folks from LinkedIn told me. Now, you can also create notes in sales, uh, LinkedIn Sales Navigator, and then you're going to have the similar copy to CRM slider there as well. Um, so, right, you can see that here. This is what it looks like, note from Sales Navigator, and then here, that message from uh, Sales Navigator as well. Now, there's also a Sales Navigator mobile app, and you can actually then call people using that Sales Navigator mobile app and then create a call within Sales Navigator that is then, again, pushed to Dynamics 365. So this is very similar uh, behavior that we have in a Dynamics 365 um, app as well, right? You're going to get that pop-up from Sales Navigator is going to ask you, hey, do you want to create an activity? Do you want to create a phone call? And again, if you set and that will synchronize back as well. Was there a question? Wielkie rozmowy z Marcinem. Marcin, nagrywasz teraz ścieżki. Tak. 
Sure. Yes, Scott. <laughs> Ale właśnie tak znaczyło, że nie, że nagrywa. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about smart links. Like I said earlier, those replaced Point Drive and Sales Navigator in, I believe, May of 2020. And this feature allows us to share content like files and documents with customers and prospects and basically any, anybody who you want to share this with. The nice thing about this is just like it acted uh, when it was called Point Drive is that when people access this content, so you send them a link, right? Here is my file. Here's your quote or here are some documents. Um, when people are accessing that document, you're actually going to receive a notification email and that action, that view will actually be visible on that contact record in Dynamics 365. Obviously, if they looked, if they viewed that information while signed in in their uh, LinkedIn profile and if that contact is matched, obviously. So. Obviously, you can share those smart links outside of Sales Navigator as well, right? If you want to send an email to your customer, but you can also attach them through uh, LinkedIn messages as well. So that's kind of what you see over here, right? There is an icon here. I can go ahead and create that smart link and then send it through that message. And again, send obviously right here is that copy message to see around button uh, and then copy that obviously um, as well. And this was a pretty big one as well. This was actually new in the last quarter where we can now create contact records in Dynamics 365 directly from that LinkedIn profile. So there was no more copying and pasting, which we had to do before. Um, so again, that can now just be done by going into Sales Navigator, just clicking a couple of buttons and then pushing that data directly to Dynamics 365. Before you can actually enable this functionality, you need to make sure again that that CRM sync is enabled and that the auto sync all seed holders with CRM, that's what I showed you guys earlier, <clears throat> that you actually have that set to yes as well. Now, besides enabling that contact creation, you can also require an email address to be mandatory in order to create the contact in Dynamics 365. Lastly, there's also the ability to, to select a lead source value that should be associated to contacts created from Sales Navigator. Now, this field is the, the system name for that field is lead source code, and that's that field in Dynamics 365 on the contact entity. And any values that you will have configured in that option set field will show there. So let me show you that real quick. So let me go down here. This is some of the stuff where we're going to be able to decide what data we want to sync back to our CRM, right? Emails, smart links, messages, and notes. Do we want to allow contact creation from Sales Navigator? Yes or no. And do we want to set that email address as required, right, before we can create those contacts? And here is that lead source value that I just talked about. So the way that that works, I'm actually going to go into my contacts entity here, and it is called lead source code. So let's take a look. Got to scroll all the way down. Oops, lead source code. This is the field that it looks at, right? If you look over here, it says I have sales navigator and other. Now, if I go here to my lead source code, sales navigator and other and if i would add to that that would also show in here as well through that integration that we set up earlier so that's what that does and it's the same thing with this particular guy right this is also looking at one of those dynamics 365 fields as well so this is what that looks like that contact creation and i always like to show it because sometimes you know when you're doing a live demo it doesn't work but i'm going to try to show you this in a demo as well but the way it works right you are on a contact and as you can see you just click on the little ellipse here then you click on that add contact to crm and then what's going to happen is the system is first going to run a quick query to make sure that you don't have this contact already in your system. And if, if you do, it's going to allow you to match it to that contact record in your system. And if you don't, you're going to see this create new contact screen. And as you can see, the fields that are visible is you're going to get um, the account fields. 
this is actually going to be an existing account in Dynamics 365. If that account does not exist, you will not need to go into Dynamics and create it first. You can't create it from here. Um, then you're going to have the ability, this opportunity field will show you all of the opportunities related to the account that you selected in the account field. And then you can put that person in that opportunity or related to that opportunity under a particular stakeholder role that you have here. And you can see some pre-populated fields, first name, last name, job title, country. You have to populate the email address yourself and a phone number as well. And then you can determine whether or not to save this lead in Sales Navigator or not. So let me show you what that looks like real quick. Let's go back here to Sales Navigator. And let's just grab a person here. Hello. Go to Sales Navigator. Okay, so let's just let's go ahead and go to James Phillips. I can just click on here. I can do add contact to CRM. Now it's searching for matches as you're seeing right here. And if it, yeah, of course that happens all the time. So I already did it earlier when it was working because this is only happening when you're doing demos. So this is what's going to happen, right? I'm going to get this window. And I can see here that that account is in my system. So I can click on that. Then it's going to search for that opportunity. I only have one, as you can see. And then I can add him not just as a contact, but I can also add him as a stakeholder. Uh, let's just do stakeholder, right? I can add his email address, test at uh, Microsoft. Let's just say James dot Phillips at Microsoft.com and then phone number, right? And I can save him as a lead in Sales Navigator as well. And then all I have to do here, obviously, is save and that will create, hopefully, I'm sure I'm going to get an error now because I just did. That should create that record now in Dynamics 365. Oh, yeah, now it works. It's so strange. This is that CRM button, right, that I just talked about. So I know that this person is now in my CRM system. And if I click on that, that should now, here we go, open my contact record in Dynamics 365. So that's how easy that is. Now, besides write-back capabilities, we also have the ability to actually view LinkedIn profile data directly from within the context of a Dynamics 365 record. And this is using iframes. Um, you also, besides just reviewing information, you're actually also going to have some LinkedIn functionality directly within your Dynamics 365 form. So think about sending an email or a message or a request to be introduced to somebody that you're already connected to, right? You can click that button and then that will bring up LinkedIn Sales Navigator so you can ask for that, um, you can ask for that introduction. So this is kind of what that could be look at you know what that what that could look like right you can see here that linkedin profile i can put that on leads contacts right on opportunities as well the person that is related to that opportunity and that company profile as well and then accounts obviously to just a company profile and leads and contacts both profiles um, as well so this is what that widget looks like right if i want to plug that on the middle of my form it's not more than just a control. So we have some of those controls, as you can see, available. The only thing you have to do, let me again pull this up. Here's my contact form. So what I did, I'm not sure if you can see that, this actually says last name. Let me zoom in a little bit. So I just went in here and I just grabbed last name. Let me just see if I can find it. Last name. Then I'm going to double, double click on that. I'm going to go to controls. I'm going to add, oops, I'm going to add that control. And this is where we're looking for that LinkedIn member profile. I don't even think about like the lead doesn't mean anything, right? But it's, it's basically those are the only two quote unquote entities that we have in, in, Dyna in uh, Sales Navigator. So you're just going to go ahead and add that. And then you can configure what you want to show on that, right? I'm just going to go ahead and do this. Oh, it's just web. So I can say, do I want to show the top card? Yes or no. So I can set this to yes or no. And that's kind of how you walk through all of those options over here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. There we go. So that's how you do that, right? And then again, let me go back here to LinkedIn. Oops, this is a little big. And this is James's record, right? I have him directly here now 
inside of my profile. Now, this is what I was talking about in regards to those hidden tabs. This is what that looks like, right? You're going to get your LinkedIn member profile of the person, of the company, and then this is your messaging history, obviously, um, over here. So I'll, I'll show you a little bit of a demo of that as well. So let me go ahead and now show you some of the functionality, right? Some of the fun stuff. Let me actually, I'm not going to talk to James because that would be really weird. Okay, so here is Angel and you can see here, right, that I've already been messaging with him a little bit. So you can see this is a message from Sales Navigator. This is a message. Now I wanted to show you some of the functionality, what we can do with this and why this is such a great tool. Right, we talked earlier um, about showing right exactly this data from LinkedIn Sales Navigator directly into Dynamics 365. So here is that LinkedIn member profile. So on the on the front, I can right take a look at where he used to work, where he uh, currently works, but I can also view his information in LinkedIn Sales Navigator. And if I click on this, that will just right open up his record in LinkedIn Sales Navigator. So let me, oops. Let me actually go back here. Let me put it next to him. Um, I can click on icebreakers, and that's really showing you what you have in common with this particular person, right? So both Angel and myself, we have six shared connections, right? I can also click a little bit further. We both worked at RSM at some point in time. He actually worked there from February 16 to March 2019, so I could talk to him about that. We also have three mutual groups that we're in, so I can talk to him about any of those groups. Um, and there is some more information here as well, right? So introductions, we all know that a warm introduction, right? An introduction through somebody that we both know is probably gonna be more successful than if I would just cold call him, right? Or send him an email. He's probably gonna go and hit delete and doesn't wanna talk to me. But if I ask Igor or if I ask Victor for an introduction, maybe it's gonna be more successful, right? So this is why this is a very nice thing to, to use. If I wanna to talk to Victor and just ask him like, hey, can you please, you know, we're buddies, can you please, you know, introduce me to him? Because I see that you guys are both in three groups together. So I, I guess you know him really well because you're connected. Can you please introduce me to him? So I can just click on this, you can see here that it's immediately loading my message and I can send Victor a message directly from within here, right? And then there's some additional information here as well, right? Related leads, if there's any related folks um, that are, for example, working at this particular company uh, that I might be connected to through one of my team members or maybe a second degree. Currently, this is not the case because Angel uh, is completely fictitious. So just so you guys know, <laughs> Um, but that's kind of what you see over here, right? If I look in the second piece of that, oh, and before I do that, actually, um, let me go back here to the profile. We talked about matching earlier, right? That the system will automatically match, but <clears throat> if that is incorrect, you can actually unmatch that as well. So if this is not the right person, right, I can go back here and I can start searching for a particular person. You type in the information, I hit search, and then I can see if there's any other folks that were found. No, it's just Angel and I can hit match from here. That's how that works. Now, what you see here is a LinkedIn company profile. So who, whatever I have in here as a company, it's going to show me my connections there and my profile. So I had him linked to RSM, but as you can see here, he is now the purchasing manager at Datum SA. So, as you can see here, it says that he is not at this company, right? And I'll show you uh, where you can see some of this later as well. So again, profile of the company that he's currently connected with in Dynamics 365. I can see again, my first connections, first degree connections, quickly kind of go through here. I can see my team link connections. Again, this is any of my team members, any connections that I have through them with this particular company, folks that are related to this company. And then my second degree connections as well. And then I have some additional information, again, recommended leads at this particular company, right? Now I do have more people here at RSM, right? That could be a potential lead. And if they are in the news, currently we don't have anything, but that's where that would show up as well. 
And then this is that messaging, right? I can go ahead and start talking to this guy. So I'm going to say, hey, Angel, I, I am just sending you a message so that people can see this goes to CE very quickly. Oops. And this is that copy message to CRM, right? I'm going to go ahead and send that. And this is very quick. This is very, very quick, should be very quick. Let's just go ahead and refresh that. And there you go, right? Hey, Angel, I'm just sending you a message so people can see that this goes really quickly. Immediately it is in here. So it's very nice um, that you get that very quickly. Now let's take a look at the account that he's actually related to, right? Again, you're going to have that LinkedIn Sales Navigator tab on here as well. Right, and a member profile is looking at whoever is the primary contact on that. That's what that's doing. But let's take a look at the org chart because I showed you earlier, right, that it's actually said on Angel's records that he was no longer at that company. Guess what? I see a big red annoying dot at his face. Right, so that is, you can see that you can now immediately see that there is something wrong here. And I probably want to go ahead and check that out. So I can very quickly, oops, I can very quickly, let me go back here. I can very quickly just double click on his record. And you can see it's it's now telling me that, right? Hey, is this contact still with this org? Because you might want to remove the link between this contact and the organization to make sure that it's up to date. So I can go in here, I can look for an account, and then I can just go ahead and, and connect him to that correct account, right? That I, that he has on LinkedIn, because I'm going to be able to see that directly from within here, which is very nice. So now let's take a look at this from the Sales Navigator point of view, right? I'm again just going to go back to Sales Navigator here. I'm just going to click on Home here. Okay, so this is your start screen. What I wanted to show you real quick is if you go to Lists. Remember that I said that some of the data that you have in Dynamics 365, that the system is going to try to match that with profiles in LinkedIn Sales Navigator. So that's what you see up top here, where it says auto generate it, right? You can see here, if you kind of hover over this, this list includes key CRM leads and contacts, right? Those are the ones that are generated because I have opportunities and leads with some of those folks. So if I click into that, that's, these are all people that are in my CRM system. Here's Trisha. Hi, Trisha. I need to call you because you're one of my leads, apparently. So, right. But also, if you go to, to all filters here, you can also, right, show contacts that are synced from CRM, not necessarily the contacts that you have an opportunity with, but anybody that you have synced from CRM, right? So you can do some searches. Um, obviously on that as well. Now let's take a look at smart links. So smart links are basically what you're doing is you can create this container and in that container you can put a bunch of files that you can then share out, right? So for example, this guy is called Docs for Angel, right? And then I can just go ahead and put data in there. So let me show you real quick. New smart link. Um, this is uh, invoice invoice for customer, I don't know, or, or flyer or whatever. And then you can add files here. Let's take a look if we had some something here. Um, here's an RSM quote. I'm just going to go upload that. And obviously you can add more than one. This is just going to take a couple of minutes. And once this is done, not sure why it's taking so long because this is a really tiny file, but you're going to see here that it says create smart link. So that's the link. Here we go. I'm going to click create smart link and there you go. Now what I can do, I can just copy that link and then I could just send it to my client either in an email or chat or whatever, right? Then what happens is once they actually access this content, I'm actually going here to analytics. I'm going to be able to see, first of all, I'm going to get an email saying that so-and-so actually accessed your content, but I can always go back in here as well to see what he viewed, right, of all of those items and how long. 
The other thing that's going to happen is there's going to be um, an activity in Dynamics 365 that also showed that he viewed content. And you're going to have a little card of the assistant as well that shows um, that something happened, that he actually went in there and showed that content. Now, for the last couple of minutes, um, I also wanted to show you guys uh, what this current solution, right, some of the purchase and option, I should say. Um, if you want to buy this Microsoft Relationship Sales solution, which is a combination, right, of LinkedIn Sales Navigator Enterprise or Team and Dynamics 365 for Sales Enterprise, you need to have a Microsoft Enterprise agreement in place. Does that mean that I can't buy LinkedIn Sales Navigator? It does not. This is just a prepackaged, cheaper um, option. You can see here, obviously, uh, by the prices, right? But if you don't have that, <clears throat> excuse me, enterprise agreement in place, you can still buy it separately. It's no, it's just really no big deal. So this is all of the different plans that they have, right? You have professional, you have team, you have enterprise. Keep in mind, though, that depending, obviously, on what you purchase, some of the features that I showed today might not be available. So for example, if you want to be able to create a contact record from you know, LinkedIn Sales Navigator inside of Dynamics 365, you will need that enterprise license. Now, it doesn't say on here what enterprise actually costs. So I contacted my LinkedIn people. I was like, I need to know this because you don't always want to contact them, right? So enterprise is 1600 annually per user. And there is a 10 seat minimum. For the other two, there's not a minimum, but for enterprise, there actually is um, that minimum. And you can go here, right, to this, you can go to this, check out this link. And what you will see is exactly all of the features over here, right? So you can kind of see the difference between teams and professional, right? And then enterprise as well. And again, this is LinkedIn, right? Um, again, go to this website if you want to compare some of those plans. Obviously, you can always contact me as well. If you guys have some questions, I can, I'm sure I can find out, um, you know, if you have questions, what the answer is to that. I work very closely with the LinkedIn team as well. So feel free to, to ask any questions. Um, I'm just going to see if there were any questions. Let's see here in the chat. Is it both way integration? Yes, it is. I went over that, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So thank you guys so much. Don't for, you know, just if you guys again want to reach out to me, feel free to to do so on Twitter or on my website or connect with me on LinkedIn or whatever. Don't forget, we're going to do raffles and we're going to have prizes after this. So make sure that you guys are now going to the virtual bar, right? To see if you guys want anything. Thank you guys so much. And again, um, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me and hopefully you'll win something in a raffle. Thanks guys. Mm -hmm.